Good morning. We light all five candles this morning, a candle for hope, a candle for peace, 
a candle for joy, a candle for love, and the Christ candle. This fifth candle completes our Advent wreath. We light this candle for Christ and we pray that Christ might be with us. Christ in our hearts, Christ in our homes, Christ in our world. And we pray that the light of Christ, the maker of hope, peace, joy, and love, that that light might shine through our lives. As declared in Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7, but when the fullness of time came, God sent his own son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God, let us seek Christ. Good morning and Merry Christmas, everybody. Welcome to this worship service with Lorraine Avenue Mennonite Church. Um, I invite you to light a candle, your Advent wreath or a Christ candle to remind us that we are all unified in hearts and spirit. And please join me in our opening prayer. Light of life, you came in flesh, born into human pain and joy, and gave us power to be your children. Grant us faith, O Christ, to see your presence among us, so that all of creation may sing new songs of gladness and walk in the way of peace. Amen. We now have two Christmas carols to sing. The first is In the Bleak Midwinter, which was included as an attachment with your bulletin. And then our second hymn is O Come All Ye Faithful. We are singing verses one, three, and four, and it can be found in your hymnal um, number 212. And you are invited to turn on your cameras if you wish, and please leave your microphones muted.
Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 148. Alleluia. Praise Yahweh from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all you angels. Praise God, all you hosts. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of Yahweh by whose command they were created. God established them forever and ever and gave a decree that won't pass away. Praise Yahweh from the earth, you sea creatures and ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and mist, and storm winds that fulfill God's word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small animals and flying birds, rulers of the earth, leaders of all nations, all the judges in the world, young men and young women, old people and children, let them all praise the name of Yahweh, whose name alone is exalted, whose majesty transcends heaven and earth, and who has raised up a horn for God's people to the praise of the faithful, the children of Israel, the people dear to God. Alleluia. Good morning again. We're doing something a little different this morning. Don't worry, I will walk you through it. It is not that complicated. But first, let me start by saying Christmas music is one of my favorite things. And this year, I began listening to Christmas music on Thanksgiving Day, if not before. I love the happiness and the cheer that it brings. And I don't really discriminate much based on whether a song is secular or religious, really listen to it all. But of course, as a pastor, I do have a soft spot for Christmas hymns, and I do find that favorites like Hark the Herald Angels Sing and Angels We Have Heard on High are not only wonderful musically, but have a theological depth in their lyrics. So I like when we get to sing them. They express joy, and they express the why behind that joy. There is one Christmas carol I love, however, that is a lot different than these triumphant hymns that speak of angels. Indeed, I actually didn't think about it much until this week, which is very funny because it's probably the most 2020 Christmas hymn there could be. I've always loved the hymn, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And if you're not familiar with this hymn, I checked it's not in our hymnal, nor in our supplements, so that might be why. The lyrics come from a poem written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow during the American Civil War in 1863, and then it was set to music almost 10 years later in 1872. The lyrics speak of Christmas bells ringing out over the land, even as there is pain. Now, I've never heard the lyrics, the words that are specific to the Civil War. I've never heard those parts sung, but they're striking. One of the stanzas begins, the cannon thundered loud and deep, and with the sound, the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. That peace on earth, goodwill to men is the refrain of the hymn. And this part talks about the sound of the cannons drowning that out. And so this, the poem continues, it was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent and made forlorn the households born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And then this is the verse that I hear often sung that I think always strikes me particularly. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. 
for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. I've always been fascinated by this hymn. Usually that last stanza is printed in hymnals, and it's a pretty bleak verse for a Christmas hymn. Hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And it feels now as if my fascination with this hymn is coming to fruition. This year has mocked over and over again the song of peace on earth and goodwill. As we have moved through this year, I keep thinking that there was never a Christmas like this. That's what it feels like anyway. But I don't think that's true, in fact. Christmas comes during war. Christmas comes during sickness, during times of grief, during times of doubt. Whether we're all experiencing it together or in our individual lives, there are times of pain. And Christmas comes anyway. Christmas arrives, Jesus arrives, whether we like it or not, and often at the least opportune times. Jesus doesn't wait. We do. After writing, and in despair I bowed my head, Longfellow penned the last stanza. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. And I love that. It's that bold truth that we need to continue to proclaim. God is not dead. God does not sleep. All will be well. There will be peace on earth. But in the meantime, let's see what we can learn now. Like I said, we're doing things a little bit differently this morning. I've invited Jerry Lichty and Connie White to share about some Christmases of the past that they remember, fondly or not. Perhaps Christmases that came despite it not feeling very Christmassy. And see if those can't provide us with some insight, some lessons for this strange season and for the days ahead. This is Jerry. I'd like to use a word that I think is fairly prominent during this period of time. The word is nostalgia. In the dictionary, it simply indicates one meaning, a longing to go back to one's home, hometown, or homeland, homesickness, the second is a longing for something far away or long ago and for former happy circumstances. Return with me to Christmas of 1949 or 1950. I was about eight years old at that point, so you can calculate my age if you wish. That's 70 years ago and most of you can't do that in terms of your own memories. For those of you that are just like children, remember your eighth birthday of uh, Christmas instead. What was your world like then? Many of us easily remember the positive elements of that life, safety, security, trust, close family, friends, and a basic societal stability. And with the nostalgia of the Christmas season, we probably as eight-year-olds remember special gifts as well. Mine was an electric train. Now think about other elements of that period of time. What was the economic situation of your family? What did they face? What about medical difficulties? What about national leadership or realities? It's much more difficult to recall those realities 
because of our innocence of age as eight-year-olds. So let's add innocence to that list of um, emotions and feelings above. How did you celebrate Christmas as an eight-year-old? Probably in a number of ways, you still include some of those similar practices which have formed or continued the traditions of your life. My childhood church had Sunday morning Christmas services, so Christmas Eve was reserved for family time. But not... Um, and that generally included gifts, not as elaborate as what we experience today, but uh, also a fairly meager Christmas tree with uh, homemade decorations, special holiday foods, and so on. Much of that continues today in a more elaborate fashion often, but the underlying emotions are probably similar. Now to jump to the present. 2020 has been the most unique year of my life thus far. I believe that's true. I was several years old when World War II ended, so can't recall the horrors of that crisis. And following wars were distant activities in some other lands. And a few national crises that we recall periodically, and a few pandemics of various sorts, although not as severe as this one. Two thousand twenty has been a life disruptor of the sort that we have not seen before. In my um, Earlier days, adults bore the responsibility for whatever happened. They had uh, the responsibility for taking care of their kids or the younger, younger people in the society. We were protected from negative impacts of societal um, affairs. And I'm oh, very much aware right now that so many people in the world and even domestically experienced far different circumstances from what I did. So that's a reality we need to remember as well. This year, no single person alive has escaped the, their share of many months of frustration, fear, uncertainty, loneliness, and grief, and an agonizing wait for a vaccine. Throughout this year, one of our coping mechanisms has been our nostalgic recall of those better times from the past, if we had those. We have selective memory recall. And especially during this particular holiday period, we return to the safety and comfort of positive memories. Then a morning headline today appears. It says, millions face eviction, poverty, as unemployment benefits expire with COVID the relief bill in limbo. What will their nostalgic recollections be like? What will eight-year-olds of our time remember? Nostalgia has a positive feel that's far removed from many of our current realities. So how do I end this statement? With another positive word, faith. And we can add that to our above list. It's part of our present and part of our past realities. And it gives us hope that our future can be positive. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Connie. Uh, and I will attempt to uh, follow Christina's uh, request to link a Christmas from the past to how I'm feeling now about this Christmas. A long time ago, before cell phones and iPads or Facebook and Zoom, Jeff and I found ourselves in a strange place at Christmas, Jamaica. Not the Jamaica of beautiful beaches and blue seas, but the capital city of mansions and slums and political gangs shooting each other through the night. It was our first Christmas in Jamaica and we tried to find ways to make the season special. There were no Christmas trees. And so we chose our Aladdin lamp as the centerpiece of our Christmas celebrations. And there's an Aladdin lamp. The lamp represented to us the light of Christ coming into the world. We were far from home and family, and it did not look like Christmas, yet God was there. This year reminds me of that Christmas. Once again, we are celebrating in our home alone with our Christmas lamp. The year has been marked by political and social violence, natural disasters, and a pandemic that has caused tremendous suffering. Jobs have been lost, families are isolated, and our church has experienced the heartbreaking loss of those we, of people we love. Daily we hear the numbers of those infected and lost by this virus in our country. And I remember Jamaica, I realized that we less often hear of the worldwide statistics of all, almost 81 million infections and nearly 2 million lives lost to this pandemic. It is truly a pandemic. It affects all people. For me, this season has caused me to widen my prayers, to remember the millions of people outside of our boundaries that have no access to health care. To realize that social distancing is an impossibility when you're crammed into a slum or a refugee camp. And to pray for the continued coming of God as the light coming into our world. This time of semi-isolation has given me more space for prayer and has op and less options for service. I am grateful to those who risk themselves to help others. I am uncomfortable being so insulated and comfortable in my home. I feel the heartbreak of the creator for our broken world. And I, I sense God's presence in my broken prayers. Thank you. Verses one, two, and three of Carol 197, Angels We Have Heard on High.
We will continue in our worship with a time for announcements and sharing about the work of our church. The first thing you may notice this morning, and before I forget, I would like to give a special thank you to Connie and Jerry for sharing this morning. I meant to do it at the very beginning of Work of the Church. It was wonderful to hear from you. We will continue singing. I don't know what we're singing. What are we singing, Mimi? 201. 201. Hark the Herald. <laughs> So my friends, may you go knowing that God is among us. Christmas has come, whether we like it or not. May we feel God's presence among us. May we rejoice today and every day. And may we go in peace. Amen.
Good morning again, everyone. Um, the Newmans have agreed to do a few Christmas hymns, take requests. You can put them in the chat. Um, we're going to take a five minute sort of break. You can talk amongst yourselves. I need to step out for a second. Um, but feel free to fellowship with one another. But if you have any requests for a Christmas hymn, the Newmans will lead us. And I think Will will play for us as well. I think if he doesn't have anywhere else to go today. 